Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. We are in the month of March and pretty much through the halfway point now of the spring semester at all BCC campuses. Last year we tried an experiment. Uh, obviously a lot of what we do on this show, we focus on the Fall River campus. And last year we were fortunate enough to go to the other campuses which uh, BCC serves its students in the Bristol County area. And it worked out so well, we're doing it again this year. We're gonna spend pretty much our entire show this month focusing on the activities at the New Bedford campus in downtown New Bedford. And with me today to start our discussion is Teresa Romanovich. She is the dean of the New Bedford campus. Uh, Terry, welcome back for another year. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. As you know, we always like to have company here at the New Bedford campus, so welcome. And it's nice for us to shed light for it the is, people in this right. area about what's happening here in New Bedford. Absolutely. Um, first of all, can you believe that this year is going to be 10 years that the New Bedford campus has had a presence in downtown? You know, it does seem amazing. I was just thinking about it the other day because the first year we opened up was in 2011, and I don't think we were open for five or six days, and then 9-11 happened. Right. And so it was kind of an interesting first year. Yeah. So it's something that we will always remember, both from the tragedy part of it and the excitement part of just having something brand new and then having to deal with something as um, big as that. So that was kind of interesting. So we're moving into now our 10th year anniversary, which is really exciting for us. Now, it, it, it's funny. Um, when President Sprague came on board, and, and even though plans were in the works at that time for, the, for this New Bedford campus, there was always questions about how successful it would be, right. you know, is it going to work? And I guess pretty much from month one, the space is too small, we're growing too right, fast. So right. tell a little bit about how successful it has been here having this presence in downtown. So it's been amazing for us because we started out the first year with about 400 students and now between all sites, because we have the New Bedford Vogue that we also mm -hmm. do for the New Bedford area and you said it's really nice for everybody to understand that we are really serving this community. So we have services and uh, courses that we ov offer over at New Bedford Vogue and obviously the the main campus for 188 Union Street and now we've expanded into the facility that we're in right now which is our e-health building. So we've grown from 400 students to probably almost 1800 now that we're serving in all of those locations and as you said every time we turn around I'm saying to President Sprague we need more space <laughs> and uh, had a wonderful meeting with the mayor very recently about looking at trying to make sure that the city does have a full campus I think everyone's recognizing that I mean we've grown from I think our first semester we had like six programs and now we have 24 full certificate and or degree programs that we offer and we're adding another eight to ten with this e-health initiative so we're growing in students we're growing rapidly in the programs that we'll be we're able to offer as well as the services I mean I think when we opened up we had this little library with just a few mm -hmm. books and now we have a full library learning center we have tutoring we have academic supports for in the virtual environment as well as a face-to-face -face environment. We have a writing lab. It's just been tremendous, the services that we've been able to add as yeah. well. So we see through our growth, the demand, I need to be able to pay my bill in New Bedford. I don't want to go to Fall River. Right. So we've been able to add that. Yeah, and that's important. That some people may not know that, uh, you know, again, the, maybe it's still a stigma that people think of BCC and they think of the main campus in Fall River. Sure. But the fact that here in New Bedford, you can come downtown and as you mentioned, take a full degree mm -hmm. program, get all your courses done, and also get all the services that right. you would pretty much find at the, at the main campus in Fall River, right, right here in New Bedford. And that's also the same in some respects in Attleboro. And, that, and that's really important for students um, who may not have transportation or may have some issues that's to get right. to get those services. Yeah, and I think that's what we hear from students. They say so many times, I wouldn't be able to do this mm -hmm. if this weren't here or they'll hear a show like this and say, wow, I didn't realize that I could go to the New Bedford campus and get a degree. I always thought that I could take a few courses, but that I would have to do something else and I can't get to Fall River. So it's really been an amazing economic and workforce development strength for the city. And I think the other thing that's been critical about our growth in New Bedford is all of its relationships between within the community. Mm -hmm. So we end up being the workforce arm for the community. So we've built private partnerships. The eHealth is a perfect example of that, public-private partnership. But we've also had wonderful relationships with the city of New Bedford, where the mayor comes to us now saying, I need this. Right. Can you make sure that this happens? We need to strengthen our green jobs. We work very closely with the Workforce Investment Board and the New Bedford Economic Development development council so when they start talking to us we become the rapid response and that's why some of the other things that we talked about talking about were grants because right. that's been 
our way of saying to the community, we can be your educational opportunity for your own community to grow it. So we've actually brought in over a million dollars each year in grants that we've been able to mm -hmm. fund. And they fund anything from ESOL. We have a STOICO grant that funded for the last several years, ESOL and GED programs. And then we've had that all the way up to just doing contracted courses for early childhood development. Or um, we've done a wise woman grant for women who are on welfare trying to transition off. We have a, another JET grant, which hopefully you'll hear a little bit about later, um, that does work with the paraprofessionals. We've been recently working with the city of New Bedford on a Brownfield grant. The mayor's office called and said that there was an uh, opportunity to help do some of the cleanups mm -hmm. in the Brownfield sites that are in New Bedford, but the companies were coming in saying, we don't want to come to New Bedford because you don't have a trained workforce. Mm. So with this partnership, we now turn it around and right. say, we can provide that trained workforce. And we've done that for lots of um, areas. Right. We're going to be spending a good part of, of our talk today about the eHealth initiative, eHealth Careers Center, where we're filming right now. Right. It was interesting. When we did this show, it was last March. Oh, was it? But we taped in February like we're doing now, sorry, you, you <laughs> secrets out. But uh, you, you said, boy, there's something very interesting that's going to happen. It's going to be great, but I can't tell you about it. And, you know, at the end of March, it was the big announcement. Yes. And now, now it's a reality. We'll talk about that later. But let me talk a little bit as we wrap up here in this first segment um, about expansion. You mentioned that. Um, th there's been talk about finding alternative spaces. Can you go a little bit, if you can, more into how that progress is, is, is going in terms of getting a, a larger home. Here sure. I think that there's been a commitment both from the mayor's perspective and the legislator's perspective to support Bristol Community College. I think they're recognizing that they have to help us step up to the plate. President Sprague has done uh, an amazing job in trying to advocate for a full campus. We've worked with legislators on bond bills, but now we're trying to look at alternatives on how do we work with the existing mayor and legislators to say we need more space. Mm -hmm. And so ongoing meetings are always being held to look at those opportunities in New Bedford and I think that we're very close to trying to make that happen and to try to figure out, and eHealth is a perfect example right. because this building that you're sitting in right now right. <laughs> wasn't even a thought right. um, when we were here a year or so ago and now here we are uh, in taking over two floors within this building and potential for expansion here. So I think that everyone's understanding that New Bedford needs this and has deserved it. Um, we did a whole study for the legislators to look at the sizes of the community colleges within Massachusetts and none of them have less than 100,000 square feet right. and here we are with right. um, so, <laughs> 10,000. So, so I, I, I wouldn't be a good reporter if I didn't ask you. We're not going to regret coming back next year and saying, you could have told me about the, the expansion like we do with eHealth. I'm only, I'm only kidding. There. It would be a wonderful surprise. That would be, wouldn't it? If you came next year and we had a full-blown campus, well, we Terry, would be so thrilled. Terry, we'll talk with you a little bit later Thank when you. we do a tour of, of eHealth. Great. And, uh, Always nice to have you. Great. Terry mentioned that there are a number of specific grant programs uh, that are specific to New Bedford students, and we'll talk about some of those grants right after this. Welcome back to Around BCC. As we mentioned with Teresa Romanovich, the great thing about having a campus in a city like New Bedford is BCC can cater to the needs of the students and also the employment opportunities of this region. And that's mainly through grant programs. And we're going to be talking about a couple of the grant programs today with uh, my two next guests. Directly to my left is Joanne Gracia. She is the coordinator of the JET program. And we have Jenna Burns, who is the coordinator of the Wise Women program. Okay. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for coming to the Bethany. Thank Joanne, you. let me start with you. Um, talk a little bit about what is the JET program in general, and, and it primarily has to do with teacher age, paraprofessionals, taking that next step to become full-fledged teachers, right, correct? Exactly. It's a grant that's funded by the um, U.S. Department of Education. JET is an acronym for Journey into Education and Teaching, so it's funded through the Department of Education's Office of Innovation and Improvement. And TTT grants, it's a TTT grant, can focus on various populations, but we decided with our grant to focus particularly on paraprofessionals. Um, TTT grants have the intent 
of um, creating teachers for high-need districts. Mm -hmm. So our partners include the New Bedford and Fall River School Districts as well as UMass Dartmouth. So what the teachers' aides, and we do recruit teachers' aides from all over South Coast, but primarily New Bedford and Fall River. Right. So what they do is they come to BCC to get their associate's degree in elementary education, and then they transition on to UMass Dartmouth to get a degree in liberal arts. They get all of their education courses there. They become licensed teachers, and through the dual certification program, which is new at UMass Dartmouth, they're also eligible with a few additional courses beyond their bachelor's to become to um, get their Masters of Arts in Teaching. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a free tuition program. Um, they also have to apply for what's called the Massachusetts Paraprofessional Teacher Prep Grant. Um, any para in Massachusetts is eligible for that grant. Um, our model is the cohort model. Um, we offer face-to-face -face as well as distance learning classes. And um, currently we have probably about 30 paras at BCC and 30 more at UMass Dartmouth. Mm, that had gone through the program? Well, that are currently in the program. Okay. We have several at UMass Dartmouth that will actually begin their student teaching next year. Okay. So, so that's good. Um, I mean, what what is the, the need um, for, I mean, is there a, a greater need in this area for for teaching and, and, and those types of services? Well, there is in the high need districts, and our okay. paras will become licensed in elementary education mm -hmm. with an additional license in moderate disabilities. And there's a great demand for people who have that dual certification, that moderate disability certification. Hmm. So. Let's uh, go to Jenna now. Jenna, talk a little bit about, we, we, we spoke about wise women last year. And I admit, before we started, I'm like, I kind of <laughs> didn't remember what we talked about last year. But that's why we have guests like you here. Right. So talk a little bit about what the Wise Women program is. Uh, well, Wise Women is an employment training program for women who are receiving TAF DC recipients, um, which is cash benefits or um, welfare. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do is we take them in and we train them in general office support positions, and then we help them find a job. And along with the academic coursework, um, we teach them some life skills. Um, they do an internship, a 45-hour internship. And then in phase two of the program, um, we help them secure employment so they are able to get off the system. Now, um, in terms of, of the program, do you actively recruit women? Or, or how do you promote it, I guess? Absolutely. Is it promoted through the state state? Uh, agencies? It is a, um, a state grant and um, it's a partnership between um, the Department of Transitional Assistance and the Massachusetts Community College Executive Office. Um, That's we a do mouthful. A, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we do our recruitment um, through the New Bedford DTA office and what happens is um, a caseworker is working with their client and um, if their client says that they're interested in an educational training program they'll get referred to me. Um, I'll meet with them and do some intake, and then um, we'll do a formal referral and get them started. Okay. And now, um, how many students are in the program, and how many have you served maybe in the in the course of this of this grant? Um, well, this is our seventh cohort. Um, this semester, they started two weeks ago. Um, usually, we take between fifteen and 20 women per semester. Okay. Um, this semester I have 21 and um, they're all still here and they're doing great. They're in their second week of classes. Um, last month we had our graduation um, for the fall cohort and um, over 50 percent of the women from the fall cohort have secured jobs in That's the area great. and they're working. Um, and in order to get refunded we need to have a 70 percent um, placement rate. Mm -hmm. So we're on our seventh cohort and we're meeting all our numbers which is great. Now in terms of what, what uh, are they uh, the basic um, skills that they learn? What are some of the skills specifically that they can learn? Well they're taking um, uh, courses that will train them for general office support positions. So okay. if, um, administrative assistance, clerical support, customer service, um, you know, any type of like retail position. Mm -hmm. I have um, uh, one of the women in the grant is um, secured a teller position at a bank, um, any kind of receptionist job. So they take office courses, um, keyboarding, executive office procedures, and intro to Microsoft Office. So a wide range of skills that'll benefit anyone, Absolutely. but specifically these, these women who may need, you know, an extra leg up, if you will, to get to that next step. Yes. Well, Jen and Joanne, I appreciate you joining us uh, today and, and all the best. And if you have any uh, more questions about some of these programs, of course, give the college a call um, at its main number or go to the college's website to find out more. We'll be back with more right after this. 
Welcome back to Around BCC, joined again by Teresa Romanovich, Dean of the New Bedford Campus. And now we're going to take a close look at this beautiful eHealth Careers building here in downtown uh, New Bedford. Terry, we talked earlier about, you know, last year when we talked, you said there was going to be some exciting news, yes. but you couldn't tell us about eHealth Careers. Yeah. And now it's, it's, it's a reality. It's here. It Talk about the need to, to improve sure. healthcare education here and how this all came about. Sure. So a couple of years ago, we started to realize that there was a lot of demand on the students part to have health programs here in New Bedford and we weren't able to do that. We also, as I talked about earlier, our relationship with the with the city of New Bedford, there was a real need for the community and the employers to say, Bristol Community College, you need to help step up, step up to the plate and bring some health programs to the New Bedford campus. So we met as a team and looked at a Department of Labor grant at the time that was available to try to do that. And the vision was to create a place where we could have non-credit workforce development training as well as credit certificate and degree programs. Mm -hmm. And when we put the budget together, it was obviously more than um, anyone could come up with from the college's perspective and unfortunately the D Department of Labor was unable to support us at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we started looking at a public-private partnership, which is very unique to the community college system in terms of programs like this. Mm -hmm. But we met a couple of people that were individual in in interested in doing this with us. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Jerry Cavanaugh from Cavanaugh Software, who actually used to be the chief of staff for Senator Kennedy, who was involved in helping us at that time with the Department of Labor grant. And we also worked with um, Mike Perrick, who was the CEO for the Princeton Review. Lots of conversations were held both locally at the college level and with local legislators as well as on the state level. And after a lot of negotiating, it was realized that Bristol Community College would be a great place to pilot this kind of a model. Mm -hmm. The city needed it. The state was interested in looking at this type of a public-private mo model with community colleges. And so eHealth was born. And now, I, let's talk a little bit about the, the need not only for... Um, healthcare services in this in this region, but also, you know, for many years the health services field and programs at BCC has always been very popular, and there's only not as not many slots for students. So obviously that helps in that in that. Um, realm as well. Right, and I think that's why it was such a need because the employers are saying healthcare is one of the most fastest growing need areas and as we grow older the need is becoming more and more prevalent because of the baby boomers reaching the age where they're needing all of that. Mm -hmm. So we knew the employers needed it. We also knew that the students who wanted to be in the programs in Fall River were many times not able to, to access them because of the wait list. Mm -hmm. And so this was an opportunity also to do that. And I think the other unique part was we listened to both students, employers, and state level people and one of the things that was intriguing was we wanted to look at a different model of of providing the training and so we're looking at a hybrid model so all of the programs and all of the classrooms that you're about to see are all a blended model mm -hmm. so the classes you happen to be sitting in a massage room at the moment we have clinic here where people can come so if anyone's out there and wants to come in for a massage you can actually do that it's a it's an operating clinic for training but also these students are receiving a lot of their academic training in a virtual environment so we've created this really unique model of educating the public in both a blended model, a face-to-face -face model, and supporting it with a public-private partnership, which is very, very exciting. How many more students are you able to um, cater to here and as part of this program, and what specifically are the medical fields which are fall under eHealth careers? So we're do, we have a three-year rollout because it's taking a while to build the space out, as you can imagine. And so we've started out this year with massage, medical coding, general studies, health science, and uh, a development developmental group and we have approximately 200 students mm -hmm. so that's been a nice start to the project and we're looking at adding in the fall occupational therapy we're adding phlebotomy this summer, adding EMT again in the fall, and we're adding um, healthcare information technology. Nursing scheduled to come in the following fall, and we'll actually be adding two new programs that the college has never had before, and we're experimenting with what those two are based on the demand for the from the community and the labor force. Mm -hmm. So 
lots of lots of new programs and opportunities are out there and that's just the credit side and on the non-credit side which was a the space that you were in a little bit earlier today we're doing certified nursing assistant we're doing pharmacy tech we're doing um, CPR first aid training so we're able to provide career pathways for people who need immediate work I need to start right away I can be a certified nursing assistant in a very short period of time mm -hmm. but my ultimate goal is to be an occupational therapist or a nurse fine we can start you on that pathway and you can still be employed and because this is a hybrid model we're really expecting maybe one to two days of actual face-to-face -face time and the rest they can do online so it's really accommodating a unique uh, group of people out there too which is been very exciting. Now the building is physically located at 800 Purchase Street in downtown New Bedford Correct. and um, we're on the second floor. Does BCC have control of just two floors? Well, I mean this second floor is actually was built after the grand opening last fall. So are there any growth plans other than the two floors? So right now we're assuming that eHealth is going to stay on those two floors and then all of the office space is on the fourth floor. But we're also realizing, as we said earlier, <laughs> give me an inch and we will grow into a yard. And we're finding that already there's need and demand for other, other programs that are interested in coming here. So it wouldn't surprise me if we're sitting here two years from now and having had even more space within here. But it's nice because because the first floor is offering the academic support center. We've really tried to make sure that we did recruitment through retention and so we're spending a lot of time making sure that students have the academic support services they need. Mm -hmm. Faculty have been working in teams. That's been very exciting for them and it's really been a good opportunity for program directors to sort of be involved in crafting something that can help them think out of the box a little bit. So I think it's been a win-win for everybody. So it's been very, very exciting. You talked about uh, the technology. On the first floor, there's a full biology lab. There's a, the a academic uh, support center, as you mentioned. And um, is the goal as in the, I'll say the main New Bedford campus d up the street here mm -hmm. from Purchase Street, is the goal to have all of the activity under eHealth careers in this one building? Or is there some crossover where so there may be some courses that students may need either up the road or maybe even in Fall River or other campuses? Right now, it's designed so that they can take all of their courses here within the eHealth building. And the reason for that is because these faculty are all working together. They're utilizing the technology that's been designed specifically for this program. So the biology lab looks a little bit different than the traditional biology lab. The massage room is um, got some state-of-the-art hydrology going on and so and so I think they're they're feeling like this is where this home will be but again standing here two years from now we'll see that there's going to be probably a lot more blending as we see in the Fall River campus. With the public-private partnership with the Princeton Review um, what role, if any, are they going to be playing in terms of maybe helping to find some employment opportunities for some of these students after they're done here? They've actually been great partners, and they have been, while, while trying to be silent, they've also been very active. We, they've been involved in working with us with some of the relationships they have. For example, they, they set up a meeting with us with the New Bedford um, Health Center, and they actually mm -hmm. worked out a partnership with them and us to do all of their training for their medical coding students. So we now have a whole cohort of students who are coming from that area. So they've been really good about helping with recruitment. We now have another group that we're training that are in Providence from the Community Health Center in Providence. So they've been very positive in terms of build, helping us to build and test this model because they would like to see it replicated nationally. So it's been a positive relationship. And the great thing about the Community Health Center, that is also literally right down the street exactly. as well. So it's right up the road. So everything can happen within this short area Absolutely. with all the New Bedford space thus far. That's and, right. and I know you're not going to get into <laughs> the expansion. Right. I'm trying. I'm trying I to know. get more out of her. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tara, I want to I want to thank you very oh, much. And, and all the I'm best, so all the best with uh, what's happening Thanks. here at eHealth Careers. And again, if anyone has any information about any of the programs offered here in New Bedford, you can just give the college a call or visit the college's website and uh, you can get more information. And we'll have more of Around BCC with our alumni segment coming up right after this. Time now for our alumni segment of Around BCC. And we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're actually going to have an alum who's joining me right now from the New Bedford area. 
There'll be more of just a one-on-one -on -one interview than the uh, normal way we've been handling our alumni segment here on the show. I'm glad to be joined by Dan Gelinas. He is a graduate of BCC class of 2004. Dan, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up and what were your interests maybe growing up in this, in this area? Oh, well, I grew up in a cushionette and a uh, typical boy. Played football, played baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated from New Bedford High in 1980, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Went to BCC in 1982, only lasted a couple months, and then I ended up in the Army. Uh, and traveled around the world, and came back, got married, and when that didn't work out, I uh, decided to go to BCC in the year 2001. So, what, um, so you came back in 2001? Correct. What was your, what was your major? My major was General Studies, because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And so I'd like to, uh, I, picked, I picked and I cho chose, you know, uh, a multiple disciplines from multiple sure. disciplines. And then I decided to major in English. So okay. once, I'm at, once I went to UMass. Now, um, you had taken a couple of classes here and a couple of classes, I, I believe, in Fall River. Is that correct? Yeah, most of my classes um, in Fall River. Actually, you had said you had gone in the early 80s to BCC. Right. What was the difference coming back after all those years? Uh, besides my age, <laughs> uh, I... I couldn't see why I, I didn't succeed the first time I went because yeah. it just seemed like I was so much more interested in it now and that probably has to do with the age and experience and wisdom and and not taking school for granted like I did last time you know I really wanted to be there this time that was the difference I think and and I and then when I seen my grades for the first semester I was like either I'm getting smarter or the kids are getting dumber I, I don't know which one it was but right. I think it was just because I took it a little bit more serious and yeah. you know I looked at life a little differently after some experience. Right. So. Talk a little bit about uh, you graduated in 2004. Um, did you go on to get a bachelor's degree? Uh, actually, I'm in my last semester okay. at UMass. Oh, good. Uh, two more courses. Uh, my Spanish, which we'll cross our fingers on that one, my last semester, and one more English course, and I'll have my my uh, my degree in English literature. What do you um, What do you hope to do after? I the, plan on well, I'm putting in my app now, but I'm trying to go to UMass Boston for my master's. Good and for you. I like to focus on English criticism. I, I'm a good critic, I've been told. So, <laughs> although I'm not that skeptical. <laughs> there you go. Um, one of the good things about um, giving back, and, and you've you've um, you said you went to the army, came back. You've stayed in this area pretty much the whole time. Yes, yes, I have. Um, and now you also uh, are giving back to BCC as as you're an employee here now. Talk yes, about I that. Am. Yes, I uh, I'm the coordinator for the tutoring services, and so I get to meet uh, all kinds of different students from a wide demographic area and it's, it's, it's a pleasure to work with with students it, it makes you feel you know alive it really does and I'm glad that I get a chance to, to work with people one-on-one -on -one. I really enjoy working with people one-on-one -on -one. I, uh, I think you get to know them better you build a rapport you know mm -hmm. people are so much different in a crowd <laughs> yeah, so yeah no I, I really have enjoyed my experiences working here in the New Bedford campus and and I hope to, to continue being the coordinator of the tutoring services. Well, Dan, I appreciate your time and, and all the best going forward. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Here are some other news and notes from around BCC. The third season of intercollegiate men's and women's basketball here at the college is complete. The men, under head coach Rob Delalue, put together their second consecutive winning season, finishing with a record of 11-9, and winning seven of their last ten games. It was slow and steady improvement for the Lady Bees under first-year head coach Terrence Smith. Even though the women finished 2011 with only two wins, there is still hope on the horizon for next year. Another comprehensive slate of programs was on tap for this year's African American History Month. The month kicked off with an opening ceremony held in the college's Commonwealth College Center featuring traditional African drumming. As in years past, there were also special presentations during the month. One was on the myth and realities of race and poverty in America, and another was a talk on the role civil rights activist W.E.B. Dubois played in the democratizing of America for African Americans. The month was capped off with a hip-hop extravaganza presented by BCC students. Special thanks again to Dean Teresa Romanovich and everyone at BCC's New Bedford campus for being such welcoming hosts and sharing the great work that's being done in New Bedford. That's all for Around BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.